Do you ever feel like your layouts start to look the same? Maybe they're missing that special touch. Well, today we're going to talk about ways that you can level up your layouts and take them to the next level. This is day five of my scrapbooking challenge where I am committed to do a little bit of scrapbooking in just a small amount of time each day. If you missed my previous videos, I've covered everything from selecting your photos and preparing them even while on the go to where to find inspiration, how to choose paper, and yesterday was embellishing made easy. So today we're going to pull it all together. Be sure to check out the playlist down below if you missed any of the previous ones. It's Labor Day weekend. The family and I are heading to the lake to go paddle boarding. We've got our Zip Fizz. My daughter loves the Zip Fizz too. What flavor did you get? I think this is fruit punch. Fruit punch, and I've got the limon today. Love this stuff for a little boost of energy in the afternoon and electrolytes. So we're gonna bring this to the lake with some snacks. I'll take you along for some of it, and then when we get back, we'll wrap up the layout that I have been working on all week. Well, we are back. It is 6.20, but we had such a good time. We went to a lake down in Denver that we hadn't been to before. We have one paddle board, so we took turns going out with the kids. And then we got to meet up with one of my husband's friends from grad school that he hadn't seen in a really long time over at a brewery. So that was super fun too. So now I'm ready to finish up this layout that we started the last few days, but I'm having so much fun with this challenge. I am pretty sure I'm going to keep it going. So stay tuned to the end and I'll talk about what's next. Here is approximately where we left off yesterday. I think I might have rearranged a couple little things, but for the most part, this is where we left off and it is a great layout. It could be left just as is, but we are going to step it up to the next level. One thing I want to point out about stepping things up to the next level is you can always do that, but it depends on how much time, energy, effort you want to put into the project. So you can leave it as is, you could leave it simpler than this, but I just wanted to show you the progression of a basic layout all the way up to stepping it up. So you can decide how you want to do your next layout. So one of the thoughts I had was to add a little bit of inking behind my embellishment clusters to kind of draw a little bit of um, detail to the background and help, especially this is white on white, kind of help this to stand off the background. So what I've done is I have put a little bit of ink with just some blending brushes on some scrap pieces of paper. And this helps me to visualize what it's going to look like without actually having to commit to doing it on my background. Remember in a couple videos ago, I talked about how I'm so visual, I really need to see something uh, before I commit. So the first thought I had was green because we don't have really green in the photos and I thought it would be a good contrasting color. So could put it like maybe behind here. So it's kind of behind the photos and the um, title there. And I really do like that. And then we've got the Sundance. This is the same as the kind of yellowy orange that we have here. That's okay, I don't love it. I, I'm not as big a fan of that. And then we've got Capri, which is the blue in here. And um, I do like that, but remember we talked about how the using too much blue could bring out the background of the house instead of the subjects. And I do think that it brings out the house a little bit in this instance. So I really do like the green and I could do a little bit of inking behind there. But then I thought that um, my title over here could use a little bit of extra and I used the white texture on white over here because I like kind of that classic look and I like the texture on the white. But then I thought, what if I bring in some of those green leaves that I had also cut yesterday and mix them in? Because at one point I was looking back at yesterday's video and I did have this tucked back behind here. And I like that. So it's just like peeking out. So I don't want to hide this one. Got to be careful here as I put things under there. Um, I like it kind of peeking out from the background. So you just get a little hint of the green. I think I might want to move this crayon, put that over there for now. 
Um, and I, I took a bunch of the leaves and I kind of tore some apart. Some of them I just used scraps and just cut portions of the leaves with that embossing folder. So that's why this one's kind of cut off. I think it was supposed to go down here or over here. So that's a great way to use scraps. Don't feel like if you're using le making leaves, don't feel like you need a whole piece to run through that embossing folder. So I had a scrap and I had just enough to cover you know, like, I, let's see, I think it was, this is backwards, but something like that. And I had a little piece that just kind of went like this. So it gave me this portion of a leaf that I can tuck behind somewhere. And then these three leaves that can tuck behind somewhere. So that's a great way to use scraps. So what if I, and some of them I did on the light side because this cardstock has a, um, the full strength color on one side and then the lighter shade on the other. That's how close to my heart's cardstock was. And Stampin' Up! is actually introducing this cardstock as well. But what if I put a little bit of that over here? Do you see how that really helps this to stand off that background more? So I kind of like that. And then what if we, kind of tuck this under here too. I like this added green, but if we add this, is that gonna be too much green? I think it is. But I think that having that extra green not only helps the this pop, but it's adding contrast to the photos and it's adding more layering, which I just really love the look of layering. Let's see, I'm gonna tuck this over here. So I'm gonna to continue to tuck all of these leaves in. I don't think you need to watch all of it, but I'm just going to be tucking them into the clusters. And yesterday we talked about in the embellishing video how leaves are just one of those things that are so great because you can just tuck them in anywhere and they're just such a great way to add you know, layers and visual texture and dimension and color. So this is a um, really great way to be adding the color, a great easy way with the leaves. All right, I've got my leaves down and I must say, I'm not sure I need the inking anymore. I think those extra leaf layers did the trick. Um, the green is gonna be too much and I think I still don't love the blue. What I might do is add just a little bit of splatter just in a few little um, white space areas. I know not everybody likes splatter, so you definitely don't need to do this uh, step, but I've got a black shimmer brush here. And I like to put my shimmer brush or if you're gonna use paint or ink or something like that on a block to work from. So now what I can do is move this photo So I'll squirt out a little bit of the shimmer brush. You can use acrylic paint that you've watered down a little bit if you don't have this, or if you have a black ink pad, smush the ink pad onto your block or a nonstick surface and pick it up with a paintbrush. You can use watercolor paint. There's lots of different options, but I'm just gonna use this and I want just a little bit not gonna go overboard. I think that's good. And then I'm gonna have to let this dry too. And then over here, I wanted just a little bit of splatter right there. All right, I do like that, but I'm still stuck on the inking idea. By the way, I didn't show you taking the clusters off, um, but what I do is I take a picture so that I remember how it went together. And then this one, the title was still a little sticky, so it pretty much stayed together on its own except for this one. So I started putting this one back together and then realized I forgot to point out that these little sneakers I um, switched out. These I cut from the pattern paper because I felt like the other one was just a little bit too big of a scale. So I like this one better. And then this one brings in a little bit of yellow there too. So I couldn't get past the idea of inking like I mentioned. So I went back to the blue and I thought, what if I just kind of keep it up here? I do like the contrast of the green and the yellow on the blue. Um, and then if I do it up here, I do need to do it a little bit in the other clusters. 
So I could just have a little bit peeking down here. We've already got a bunch of blue here, so that would be the opposite side there. And then over here, I could kind of tuck it under and just have it peeking out above and maybe below. I don't have this cluster all the way back together. I did the splatters above and below and ideally I would have done this before the splatters. It might smear a tiny bit, but I did let it dry for about half an hour or so. So the other idea I had was to use a stencil. I had this brick stencil that, you know, mimics this brick, but I think that's going to add a little bit too much attention to the inking and a little bit too much contrast and I didn't really like that. So I think I'm just going to do a little bit of inking. I'm just going to go for it, cross my fingers, hope for the best. And let me grab my Capri ink again. Now, if you're using close to my heart ink like I'm using, um, if you rub this on, then it, it's not as juicy as Stampin' Up! ink. Now, I transitioned to using Stampin' Up! ink for my new inks, and those ink pads are a lot juicier. So you just need to like barely touch the blending brush to the ink pad if you're using one of those colors. So let me get the picture out of the way again. And so I'm just gonna come down a little bit behind here and I wanna get to the edge and I wanna come up the top, but I don't wanna get the composition paper. So let me mask that. All right, I've got this masking paper that we'll just put right there. All right, so let's get this kind of where it's gonna go and then I'm gonna start behind because that's where the harshest uh, mark is gonna be. And then I'll go out from there, kind of spread out and just do a light inking. See how we've got that harsher mark right there? So I try to either dab off off of the paper or do it behind where an embellishment is gonna be so it doesn't peek out. So I didn't smear much, so that's good. It was dry enough. All right, so let's see how that looks. I like that. It's just a hint of that blue. I don't think it's detracting from this. Um, I like it. I, th I think I like it. Okay, so let's go for it down here as well. Let me get this back closer to where it's gonna be. Got situated a little differently. Okay. So I think I'll start here and then come out. We'll hope for the best. I think that's good. I might actually want a little bit up here too. Have that like that. I think I'm gonna like that. So let's move this. All right, so I've got this masked off. I'm not adding any more ink. I just want a little bit. So I'm just gonna kind of come up like that just for a hint of it behind that leaf. Okay, and then over here, Let's see if I can just mask off the photo and get it right here. All right, I think that'll work. And then I'll do the same thing down here. Now that the inking is done, it's time to put everything back together. So what I do is I usually put my iPad up with the picture that I took and I keep it so that the screen doesn't go to sleep. So it just stays on. And I keep referring to the iPad as I'm putting those clusters back together. I know it might sound like a lot, but it really comes together quite quickly. Now that everything has its place, it's pretty easy to put it back together. So then I will take my barely art glue. I really like the Barely Art Glue because it's got the fine point nozzle and I can easily kind of tuck it under all of the sprigs and pieces to make sure that they are glued in place. And then a lot of times I will take the top layer of a cluster and I'll put a little bit of thin 3D foam on that so that it has just a little bit of dimension. And that's another great way to step up your layouts. Now the final step of the layout is to add embellishments. Now one thing that I really appreciate about Stampin' Up! is that they have some really fun embellishments. So the question is, do I want to have a color 
that will stand out or do I want something a little more neutral like gold or something that will kind of blend in but add a little bit of something extra. So I'm leaning toward doing something more neutral. These are one of my favorites. By the way, these are little like uh, Avery vinyl passport holders that I put a four by six piece of paper in and then I put my embellishments on the front and back and I'm really liking how this is working and this little container. So I showed this um, in a couple of videos ago, but just in case you missed it. So these are one of my favorites and I love that they've got like gold glitter and little pieces of like holographic tinsel. So those could be a contender. They look good with this kind of looks like picks up the gold. I could do something like the silver glitter or I don't think I like the metal. We've got these fun iridescent ones. Those iridescent, I'm not feeling iridescent. We've got a different kind of iridescent already going on with that. These are two pastel, not right. We could go with just plain rhinestones. Those are reading a little bit silver though. And we, I feel like this needs gold. So maybe not those actually. We've got some colors. These ones have little pieces of silver tinsel in them. They're super cute. They look so much better in person than they do on the website. So hopefully you can see them through these little sleeves, how cool they are. So yellow could work. I don't think I wanna bring out more yellow or orange. Not those. Now some of these could work. The yellow really. I don't think I want yellow. We've got blue. These are the wrong color blues. The green could work, but we already have so much green now with all those leaves. Those are some close to my heart ones. I don't think any of these colors are quite right. I really think that the neutral is actually gonna work here. I feel like I don't wanna bring in more color. That's my first gut instinct. So that is just what I'm gonna go with. I really like using a piercing tool to get these off and scooch this over just a little bit. So I like to put a few of these in each cluster. Can you see them? Is the light picking up that iridescent shine? They're so pretty. All right, so I'm going to grab a big one and um, I just like to put like three in each cluster. So there's one and I like to tuck them pretty close to the cluster, maybe even overlap. Actually, I think I'm going to switch these. I want this big one down here and then this small one, I kind of like it overlapping like that. So you can overlap too. So we'll put one there. And then I liked that other one overlapping. Let's try that one right here. And then another small one. Actually up in that top cluster, since it's a bigger cluster, I'm gonna go with two big ones. I think I like that there. So I like them kind of tucked close to the clusters because having things tucked close to each other gives your eye, um, lets your eye know that they're related. So if I had um, a one just like way down here, it just kind of, it, it does kind of even this out, but I do like asymmetrical. I like this hanging down. It looks better up here if you're going to put it close you know, put two on this side. Down here, it just feels like it's kind of in no man's land. So it's something to, to keep in mind when you're doing this type of embellishing with just the little gems or scatter pieces is tuck them close to each other or close to the cluster so it feels like they relate. So I'm going to tuck another one down here. The other nice thing about using the piercing tool for doing this is see how it's kind of holding it out. So your hands out of the way and you can see how it's going to look and kind of audition it in different places. I like this overlapping right there. I think I'm going to use another big one in this cluster because it's another fairly big cluster. I think I like this one right here. So let me bring this up closer so you can appreciate all of the detail that we added. 
I hope that you enjoy this and I'm going to talk to you in just a moment again about what the next step in this challenge is going to be. So we're done with this layout, but what does that mean for this challenge? I want to keep it going. I'm having so much fun and I'm loving doing just a little bit each day. And I hope that it's inspiring you too and showing you that you can do just a little bit each day so that you're not feeling overwhelmed. Like you have to do a whole layout or a whole, have a whole chunk of time to get some scrapbooking done. So in the next upcoming videos, I've got some ideas. I got a new episode. Epson PM400. I know I already had one. I broke it. It's totally my fault, but you know what? That gives me an excuse to do an unboxing with you. So I'm going to unbox that. I'm going to do some cleanup and organizing, some unboxing of new supplies, um, putting maybe another layout together. I have some ideas and I'm really excited to just keep this going. I will sprinkle some full process layout videos in in between as well. I do have one already recorded, but I just haven't edited it yet edited it yet <laughs> and um, but I'm loving that this is making me feel like I don't have to do a complete layout and edit it and all of that like I normally put two process videos up a week and that's a lot to create and the whole editing process too is a lot these videos are faster because they're little bits of chunks of time and they're so much easier to edit too so I encourage you to play along with me. Do a little bit each day to feel creatively productive. Tomorrow I will be back with another video and that will be right here when it's ready.